Good morning, and welcome to Christ the King Lutheran, especially those that are joining us on Facebook. A special uh, welcome to all of you. This is a busy day today. Have you noticed any bees flying around? A beehive of activity today. Uh, I, I caught a few people with that earlier. So we begin our student classes this week on a faith walk journey. We'll have to start on Wednesdays. Confirmation is kicking in pretty soon. And we look forward to all those learning times. We thank the council for sharing a breakfast with us afterwards. So we have fruit and rolls ready for all of you after worship today. And then we'll have a little activity around the tables as well to kind of make this a very special rally day. It's also a day where we kick off our fall shine your light campaign commitment campaign so in the mail tomorrow we'll be sending all of you one of these cards we have them available to look over this morning as well and we're asking you to check four boxes on those cards you can kind of read that through and then as you bring your commitments back to Christ the King we have a special poster that I worked really hard on yesterday free hands sketch to the church and as you come back we're going to put a little light on that church building sketch to remind us of the impact of this campaign your commitments as we move forward as a church here in the next next years at Christ the King so we hope you can be a part of that and we're going to fill our church and our neighborhood with Christ's light as we begin here this fall we're going to install the call committee this morning as part of the worship it's also a day to share some historical reflections so there's a table there is a table out in this entryway and during the sermon, we'll have an activity. You'll need at least four sticky notes. If you didn't get any, I'll give you permission to get up and go get some of those at either entryway for use during the sermon this morning. A couple of other things that are happening here. The youth need your help with donations for a Lutheran World Relief Project for our school kits. Uh, there's little cards that are available. You can take that home, bring those items back, and there's a box for that collection. The youth are also selling... Uh, preferred coupon books, $25 a book, and $10 will come back to the, each of those books that are sold to the youth ministry here. We're also inviting sponsorships, as we do every year, for our three-year-old Bibles, first Bibles we hand out. What about the quilts? Isn't that amazing? All these quilts, that are, <clears throat> the congregation is full of all kinds of warm quilts and the colorful uh, pieces that they use in those quilts. We want to thank the women for their quilt ministry. So let's do that. <laughs> the annual CTK ham dinner will be also happening in November, a little bit later than we normally have it, the first part of November. But we have ticket booklets available. And Gail Spanky Larson, wave your hand so everybody knows where you are has booklets of tickets. If you'd like to help us sell some of those ahead of time, that would be wonderful. We turn to the inside of your bulletin insert. We want to thank you for your gifts to the Great Plains Food Bank Challenge. Our Page Turners Book Club is starting up again. The Grief Share Program will begin on September 20th. The women are excited to begin their circles again this month. We also have a healthy class, healthy life, healthy church, healthy relationships. That will begin next Sunday at 8.15 before worship and then also on Wednesdays at 4. Hope you can be a part of that. On the back pa page, and this is really a big deal, this Tuesday evening, a couple days from now, 5.30, the Synod, Bishop and staff will be with us inviting all the churches in Moorhead area to be at Christ the King for a barbecue and kind of fun event with our bishops and staff. So we inviting all of you members to join us at that special barbecue hosted by the bishop and his staff. The Human Resources Personnel Team will meet Wednesday at 7. And finally, I'm going to invite Steph forward as she shares some highlights of the busy summer of youth activities. There you are. This is, we just called, this is how the summer sizzled here at CTK with our youth. So just to give you a little highlight about what we were up to. And so this was our, um, we started out with our VBS uh, preschool night. 
And we had, and they came for dinner and games and some activities that we learned from, focused kind of on the story of Joseph and his plight. And the theme, um, you can see some games and some little, a little sister came along, so she enjoyed it too. So we made some things, we played some games, and it was part of like one of the nights of a monumental VBS, which is our theme for our uh, week-long group. And each day we had a theme for this one. It was God loves you no matter what. And of course, we cut, so we, that's kind of what the preschoolers did too. And so here in the middle, we've got going from story time, and then we were over, we used this back, a little right here, this was their cave, and they went in the cave and, and acted out the story here. Of course, they love snack time, so there's always really fun snacks with, to, that they make stuff out of the snack, and that's a, that's a, that's a huge hit, usually. Here, the last day was <laughs> when we were in, how they had been in jail and had escaped, so they coat closet became our little jail that they were in and they loved getting to go in there and then from there we went um, and actually we had camping before the three day we had we had preschool and then camping and then the three day week before the fourth of July here you can see some pictures this is pastor Randy and one of our kiddos hiking on our hike to Holloway Hill up at Maplewood we do VBS in the woods for the fourth um, kids who have finished fourth and fifth grade and sixth grade so we take those kiddos we um, tie-dyed uh, uh, t beach towels with their names on it. We had some tent time. Um, we were made some beach or some birch bark journals that we painted with soil. You can see some of that. Lots of like kids learning how to put up a tent. Uh, we had some group games. Uh, we went fishing and we went kayaking and we went canoeing and rowboating. And we did have a little um, little bad weather scare in the middle of the night. So luckily we have backup churches that support us in Pelican Rapids. So uh, a little after midnight, we all loaded up in the van and headed into Pelican Rapids, and we, s our, we slept over in the basement of the church there. So that was pretty nice. But we had, honestly, beautiful, beautiful two days. It was just rainy at night. So we, we did fine and came back and had breakfast in the morning under the shelter. We have a, we have a fun baseball game we make, play in the water that we, now we bat from shore, and then they have to swim to each base that's tied to some uh, jump rope out in the lake. It's, that's an, always a tradition. We make pudgy pies, so they're in the middle. Nolan's got his pudgy, oh, a couple of them have their pudgy pies they make over the fire for some of their camping meals. And of course, Pastor Randy came and played guitar for our bonfires, and after our hike, we had communion up on the top of the um, hill up there, which was gorgeous, it was beautiful weather. So look at that, right, at Maplewood. Can't get much closer to God than right there, so that was awesome. We had lots of fun um, adults along that came and volunteered, and so families connected. Kids got to know other adults in our um, in our congregation. And yeah, here's our sleepover, <laughs> which was pretty funny. And then we found in the bathroom this sign that says, "God watches over you." And the Lord will keep. Um, I can't read it that small, but it was pretty cute that we the girls found this. I'm like, look, see, some of them were a little nervous about this lightning and everything. So I'm like, see, they even put a sign here for us so we knew we were watched over. So I'm like, we're, we're, he's always got us. It was pretty awesome. So here was our next day with some fishing. We caught, caught quite a few fish um, and they kind of had fun trying to out the rowboats and the different activities. So next comes the youth group. They took, had a great 18, was full load, um, went to Valley Fair in two vans um, they, and they had a great day, uh, something that our kids don't like to miss packed. And then this year was the first time for a while that they went on a, a houseboat trip up on Rainy River. So you can kind of see a group of them had some great time relaxing, spending time together. Um, and yeah, you can just kind of check out doing some swimming, cooking together, planning meals, Bible study. Um, and they just enjoyed that time together. Jody took the kids on that. Jody Kottenbach, our youth director. And let's see. Yeah, and there you go. That is how our summer sizzled here with the youth at CTK. Along with youth group went all summer long. There were events every Sunday night and that Jody kept them busy with bonfires and cards. They love to play Uno. We come and play Uno. So it was a great summer. The kids stayed connected and um, it was a bunch of fun. So we appreciate your support. Yeah, that's a great summer, summer, summer sizzling, and 
you do ministry well here with your youth and children's ministry. So let's continue now with our Shine Your Light litany. Oh, and also welcome to the choir. Choir is back today, so we're so excited for your first choir anthem in the fall. O oh Christ, you have brought us out of darkness. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The night is as bright as the day. Shine your light and scatter the darkness. Fill your church with glory. Christ among us. 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 We receive the light that comes to us. There are those whose light may have grown dim, those who are hungry to believe and yet are not sure, or those who would reject your light. Give us new hearts, new hope, and new song. Call us to reach out with your light, Christ Jesus. Call us to hold your light, Jesus. We want to shine your light to those discouraged, dejected, despondent, or disappointed. We want to shine your light to those who have given up, who don't feel wanted, who feel lonely and are in need. Lord, we carry your light and shine. Amen. Let's sing together our first hymn. share in our opening liturgy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the peace from above, 
and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation, blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray together. O oh God, overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care that we may reject whatever is contrary to you and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the lessons. In our first lesson today, we start with the Israelites have gotten out of Egypt and they've regressed back into their own society as they were used to. They wanted to put a face on God. So as it was in the Egyptian society, there were several main gods and one, of course, was one which was called Happy or Apis. That was the bull. Some Canaanites known it as Bowl. And that was of power and fertility. But the God that they chose in this lesson was Heather, more of a feminine type of God, represented by a heifer, or as you probably know it, as the golden calf. And it offered deliverance from their oppressors. Now, there was a problem with this, because the Israelites now knew that they were not to worship any other gods. Instead, there was one true God. So, as the lesson continues, you find that Moses is up there as an intercessor between him and God and is one of the early lessons where God takes away his justice, which he feels should be done, 
and instead offers us grace and mercy. So the lesson, Exodus 32, 7 through 14. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are our gods, O Israel, you brought, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them I, uh, so that I may consume them or of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with a great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, It was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised, I will give to you your descendants, and you shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. From the psalm today, David speaks about his adulterous acts with Bathsheba. And he realizes that within a society, it may not be a sin against society, but he now realizes it's a sin against God. And again, another example of grace. The hyssop that was mentioned later in the reading here was actually used to place the blood around the doors of the sacrificed lamb so that they would be saved from death at the last peril that happened. The the reading, please read responsibly, from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Timothy, and it goes with the theme for today. Paul expresses his appreciation for God's grace, and in the 17th verse actually gives an emotional response, which sometimes is, is used within churches as a doxology. 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 17. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorant in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and the love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, and the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The 
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. Sounds like a good place for a story, doesn't it? So Jesus told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he is found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, said Jesus, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And they went, all went away, scratching their heads, saying, This guy must be up to something. I like it. The Gospel of our Lord. He may be seated. When you go into a dark room and flip the switch, the darkness flees. What makes the light able to overcome the darkness? Is it the filament or the glass? Is it the shape or the design? In themselves, none of these things can make the darkness flee. But when electricity, the energy of charged electrons, is sent up into the bulb, it heats the wire filament and bursts forth in raw, glowing power. God created you to be the light of the world. The problem is, some of you are running from the darkness. Light doesn't run from darkness. It illuminates it. You see, darkness has no power, Darkness is simply the absence of light. So what are you doing to be the light in your schools and in your workplaces and in your communities and your families? When you start letting your light shine in a dark world, people will not only see you as different, they will marvel at you because darkness cannot comprehend light. God never called you to fit in. He called you to be an explosion of light that would rattle the rest of the world with truth. It's time you stop hiding the light God placed inside of you. It's time you start shaking the foundations of this culture with the gospel by lighting up the skies. You are the light of the world. It's your time, and the time is now. Light up the world and make no apologies for it. All right, we're going to need some help here. Are you ready? Full of energy on rally day? Give me an S. What's that stand for? Jesus Christ our Savior. Give me an H. What's that stand for? He is in me, I am in him. Honor God with your gifts. Give me an I. What's that stand for? It is no longer I who lives, but he who lives in me. Give me an N. Yes. What's that stand for? No matter what, God walks with us. Give me an E. e. What's that stand for? Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Today is Shine Your Light Commitment Sunday, kickoff Sunday. Remember to commit yourself to be active to Christ the King in worship and in programs. Remember to give a substantial, over-the-top, 
extraordinary monetary offering gift to pay down the mortgage loan. Remember to pledge your monetary gifts to continue the ministry and mission of the church in 2023. And remember to invite five friends to worship with you. What's that spell? Shine. What's that spell? Shine. What's that spell? Shine. Shine your light. Who doesn't get this? A shepherd leaves 99 sheep in his flock to find one lost sheep. A woman loses one of her prized possessions, so she lights a lamp, sweeps the entire house, looks through every nook and cranny in her house, every crack in the sidewalk, until she finds this. Who doesn't get this? We've all lost things. Recently, my wife <clears throat> sent me with a bag of kisses, you know, those chocolate kisses that everybody loves. There's a little hyperbole here today. I had, what, two to three of those on my way back to Moorhead? It reminded me of my wife, right? Chocolate kisses. I got back to Moorhead, unloaded my stuff. Wait a minute. I went to the grocery store first, and I bought my groceries for the next couple of weeks. I was ready to go. After several trips up and down the stairs in the parking garage, two to three trips, I was sitting down after I fixed a quick supper, and I was saying to myself, boy, one of those chocolate kisses would sure taste good, and they were nowhere to be found. So two or three more trips down to that garage to look all through my car, under the seats, and the dashboard, and the glove box, and the side by the door thinking maybe they fell off when I was unloading earlier in the day. I went back to the apartment and I searched high and low everywhere I could think of. No chocolate kisses were found. They were lost. Who wouldn't get this? Now you and I have lost much bigger things than this. Like our wallet or a purse or ID or a passport. We lost a piece of jewelry down the drain. Maybe we lost a set of car keys. Or perhaps we lost a pet, like a dog or a cat or a fish. I was at a women's retreat leading some Bible studies with the women. On one of our breaks, one of the young ladies went to the restroom. And guess what? Her cell phone accidentally fell in the toilet and flushed right down the drain. And so here we were outside the retreat center looking in that water, that holding tank water, thinking, at least she was thinking to herself, maybe, just maybe, that phone might beep at me and I'll see a light in that murky water. Lost. The Gospel of Matthew adds parables of treasure hidden in a field field, the pearl of great price. The lost item is that precious, that valuable, says Jesus. Who doesn't get this? Luke, when he concludes these parables of lostness, goes one step further and brings it into our human relationship realm. A father had two sons, you know the story, and one of those sons was demanding his end-of-life inheritance earlier on in his life, he said, Father, give me what I have coming to me. So his father granted the wish. And the son goes away, and you know the story, squanders all of that inheritance in loose living. He loses everything. He's lost. He's lost it all. And so he decides to go back home. And on his way home, as the father sees his son coming down the road, his lost son, he goes down the road, he runs down the road, embraces his son, and he says, Rejoice with me. My son who was once lost is now found. Let's throw a party. Jesus has the father in the story saying those words. My son was lost, but now he's found. Jesus, of course, is pointing to our lost condition as human beings. But God, in his grace, as Mike so eloquently taught us this morning in the reading of the lessons, God, in God's grace, finds us and never, ever loses us. We could almost hear ourselves saying this. Have these words been on your breath 
so much that you can't tell everyone what once was lost is now found. What I lost, I found. Jesus has the shepherd saying, Rejoice with me. I have found my sheep that was lost. And Jesus has the woman calling all of her neighbors and her friends saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found that priceless possession that was lost. And the stories just keep right on coming. The farmer goes out and sells all that he has just to have that treasure in the field. The merchant goes and seeks out and finds that great pearl of great price. Who doesn't get it? The story of a little boy that came out this last week. I saw it on Good Morning America on ABC in the morning news. He lost his leg because of a bull shark bite off the Florida Keys while they were snorkeling as a family. Now, normally that wouldn't happen there. It was a popular place to go snorkeling. It was safe, right? But not for little boy James Reeder. He was 11 years old. He was out snorkeling, and he was bit by this bull shark. His family noticed that something wasn't right, and so they hauled the boy into that snorkeling boat they'd went out on. And they called 911, I suppose, with their cell phones, even out there on the ocean. And because their boat wasn't very fast, they signaled some speedboats to come and help and, and pass the boy to the speedboats with his mom. And then they went to the shore, and he was lifelighted by helicopter to the children's hospital in Miami, Florida. But as his dad was handing off his son, James, as his father tells the story, James looked right at his dad, eye to eye, and he said, Daddy, Jesus is going to save me. The kingdom of God, God's care for us, Jesus says, is that precious. That's the gospel. That's we're a phrase that we're going to stick with. It's good news, it's joy, it's rejoicing, it's priceless, really. At the tail end of the Gospel of Mark, Jesus commissions his followers with these words. Go out and proclaim the good news. That's everywhere. Go into all the world. That's the neighbors across the street here at Christ the King Lutheran Church. It's right here around Christ the King. It's the neighbors in your hood. It's everywhere. Go, Jesus says. That's an action word, a charge. It means you get up and you get going. You start moving. Go, Jesus says. Get out. Now, we have this joke in our family. One time, my wife and son and his, my daughter-in-law were going shopping. There was lots of traffic, as I remember. It was a busy day at the mall, cold, wintry as well, as I remember it. I pulled up to the front doors of J.C. Penney, and without thinking about what I was saying, I shouted, well, as the family remembers it, jokingly anyway, I commended them, get out. <laughs> Go, get out. Jesus' words carry on them that sort of emphasis. Go into all the world and tell the good news. The word in the Greek language is kerygma. That means the herald of good tidings. That means the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel. Preach, teach, model, share the kerygma, the gospel, the good news. There was a saint who said it this way. Preach the gospel, if necessary, use words. Now today, we're not only launching our Christ the King Fall Commitment Sunday campaign, Shine, shine your light, but also celebrating our history and the days of grace that God has given you here at Christ the King Lutheran Church. So right now, in the midst of the sermon reflection, and I saw the ushers coming down the aisles passing these sticky notes out, I ask you to pull those out, find an instrument to write with. You need at least four, and if you don't complete the task during the sermon, it's okay to finish it during worship. But at the end of the service... If you don't have sticky notes, that's okay. I invite you to put those dates on that timeline of the history of Christ the King, Lutheran Church of Christ the King. 
And then next week, we will pray over all of those memories that you have, those cherished blessings of grace. But we'll also acknowledge the failures along the way, the downtimes, the shortcomings that you and I have experienced, that you have experienced as a body of Christ here in Moorhead, Minnesota. And we will share in a service of reconciliation and healing and leave it all before the Lord at the altar that day, knowing that Christ lifts us up, moves us, and calls us to still go and to get out. So on that first sticky note, I want you to put down the year. Year is okay. You can be more specific if you want, but just the year is okay when you join the church. Or you might write down the year of your children's baptisms, first communion, when they receive the first Bible, confirmation, weddings here at Christ the King, even funerals. That's the first note. The second note, you might want to just be writing a little Q on each of those sticky notes. So here's the second Q. I'd like you to write down a person you remember who was a minister here, a pastor, a staff member, a youth minister, an office worker, Sunday school teachers, vacation Bible school. Maybe you went with your youth minister on a mission trip, but name those people. Put some dates to it. When did they serve here? When do you remember them being here? On the third note, I would like you to write up something that was very special that happened here. Now, some people might remember the highlight of their life here at Lutheran Church of Christ the King was the ham dinner. Write it down. Or maybe it was you went on a mission trip with the youth group, or you were an adult chaperone for that mission trip. Write that date down. Very significant. Or for some people, you just can't beat candlelight service at Christmas Eve one particular Christmas Eve that you remember, or an Easter Sunday service. Write down a significant moving event for you. Put the year on it. And then your fourth sticky note. <clears throat> this one's a lot harder, but it's important to be honest and transparent, real and true with your brothers and sisters in the body of Christ here. I would like you to find in your internal frame some surprising moment for you a challenge, a conflict. Maybe it was a down time as a church member here. Please be honest. Write down the date. You don't have to be too specific, but you can simply write down a cue for us to understand it was when such and such pastor left or is when such and such happened here at Christ the King. Go, get out, preach the gospel, proclaim the good news. Who doesn't get it? This is our charge on Rally Day as we head full bore into the fall. In the last few weeks, and I do mean weeks, your church leaders and staff have been hard at work preparing for this Rally Day launch. The Education and Children's Ministry Confirmation and Youth Ministry team are very well prepared. We're excited to journey with you. Thank you. Can you say thank you with me to them? Thank you. Our property committee has done a huge amount of work in the last couple of days here. Every nook and cranny, every corner, every doorway, every table, outside and inside, every crack in the sidewalk has been thoroughly cleaned and readied for this fall kickoff. Can you say thank you with me? The women are waiting in the ranks, eager to start their Bible studies again, turning on the lights of knowledge and renewal. Can we say thank you to the women? Thank you. And our worship and music committee have gotten together and done some wonderful planning for the fall. The choir is back with us today. We are starting up again that Wednesday, lively, casual, contemporary worship service. Can we say thank you to them? Thank you. And that's just a beginning. Each of you are called to go and proclaim. What? The good news. We all need good news. To our friends and neighbors, everybody needs that. Preach the gospel. If necessary, you use words. Get out. Seek out and save the lost, and then bring your acquaintances, even strangers here, because we're throwing a party. 
Jesus tells his disciples on the Sermon on the Mount, you are the light of the world. Can you say that? You are the light of the world. Shine. Say that. Shine, Shine your light. Shine That's the charge. That's your invitation. Commit yourself to this place. Share your financial gifts. Invite your friends. Shine. Shine with Jesus' light. Why? Because what was once lost is found. You can't help but tell the story. And this is so precious, people sell all that they have. They call all of their friends and their neighbors, and they want people to know what once was lost is found. And they want to stay in the light. Who doesn't get this? Who doesn't get this? If anyone finds those chocolate kisses, let me know. <laughs> shine, shine your light. Amen. Together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, God has called us into a new time in our life of the Lutheran Church of Christ the King. It's a time for reflection and prayer, a time for self-examination and seeking, a time for expectation and hope, 
We need a pastor to lead Christ the King, and God has promised to provide that pastor. The following people have been elected to serve as the call committee of Christ the King. As I read your names, please come forward. Dan Sly, who will be serving as chair. Audrey Johnson, serving as secretary. Anna Waldron, Mark Rasmussen, Joanne Carlbloom, and Abby Haugen. If you guys can come up to the steps and stand before the altar, please. Dear friends, you have been elected to serve as a call committee for this congregation as you seek a pastor to lead Christ the King. Sapid scripture guides us in our task to seek a pastor who strives for righteousness and godliness, faith and love, endurance and gentleness, a pastor who is a servant as Christ himself was a servant, a pastor who is not domineering or quarrelsome, but who leads with care and concern for God's flock. A pastor who is filled with the Holy Spirit and a trustworthy steward of the mysteries of God. Yours is a spiritual endeavor on behalf of the congregation. I ask you now, are you willing, therefore, to be open to the Spirit's leading and by prayer and holy conversation to undertake this calling to seek the pastor for us? If so, answer yes by the help of God. Will you be diligent in your seeking, careful in your listening, purposeful in your questioning, and respectful in all that you do? If so, answer yes by the help of God. And will you seek the Lord's guidance through Holy Scripture and prayer and your deliberations with your fellow committee members until you are brought to one mind and one will in Christ and have chosen God's pastor for Christ the King? If so, answer yes by the help of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone are the great shepherd of the sheep. We turn to you to lead and guide us in all things. As you have raised up faithful servants of your holy word in each time and place, send us now, we pray, to lead our flock to a pastor. Send us a pastor with goodness and grace, of strength and faith, of righteousness in your sight. Send us a pastor to comfort and care for us, to preach your word, to teach our children, to baptize and commune, to marry and console, to visit the sick and lay to rest, to guide us and pray for us. Give us holy patience in this time of our seeking. Keep us faithful in mission, regular in worship, responsible in stewardship, mindful of the needy, and diligent in prayer. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and magnify our gifts of discernment that we might follow your will, leading into a future yet unknown. And bless those who are specially called to serve on this call committee. God, we pray that your people will receive mercy and your grace will overflow in our lives. Fill your church with faith and love and give understanding hearts to those who work to strengthen our relationships. God of grace. As scattered grains of wheat, we are gathered together into one bread. So let us gather our prayers of the church. God of grace. Your creation even groans as it suffers the impacts, lack of care. As the seasons change, renew in us the will to protect the environment and plants and all living things. God of grace. God, your world is shattered and nations rage. Remember us in your mercy. Teach us wisdom. Teach wisdom to our elected leaders so that we may know peace in the world, peace in our homes, peace in our hearts. God of grace. Your children wander homeless and hungry and they cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost or lonely, anxious or depressed, or struggling with addictions or an illness. Provide for those in any need. God of grace. Gather together in the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit. Gracious God, we offer these and all of our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And let's give a word of thanks to our call committee.
continue with our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. And so with all the choirs of angels, and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. It was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave thanks. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. This do in remembrance of me. We sing together the Lord's Prayer. things are now ready, we sing together our songs of faith. Mercy on 
us peace. Grant us peace. Softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home. Grace made good, there is mercy. 
mercy with the Savior, there is healing in his blood. There is grace enough for thousands of new worlds as great as this. There is room for fresh creations in that upper home of bliss. Please stand. Receive the blessing, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and preserve you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. May God, your Maker, send you back into the world with energies refreshed. May Christ, your light, illuminate even your darkest moments. May the Holy Spirit, your Counselor and Director, guide you until we meet together again. Let's sing together. Rise up, O saints of God, from vain ambitions turn. Christ rose triumphant that your hearts with nobler zeal might burn. Speak out, O saints of God, despair engulfs earth's frame. As heirs of God's baptismal grace, the word of hope proclaim. Rise up, O saints of God, the kingdom's task embrace. We dress sin's cruel consequence, give justice larger place. Give heed, O saints of God, creation cries in pain. Stretch forth your hand of healing now, with love the weak sustain. Commit your hearts to seek the paths which Christ has trod. And quickened by the Spirit's power, rise up, O saints of God. Go in peace, shine your light.